My sheep hear my voice, says the Lord. I know them, and they follow me. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Almighty God, to you to all hearts are open, all desires known, and, and from you no secrets, no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High. Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, O merciful God, that your church, being gathered by your Holy Spirit into one, may show forth your power among all peoples to the glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the proclamation of God's word. shall be granted you, and what is your request, even to the half of my kingdom, it shall be fulfilled. Then Queen Esther answered, If I have won your favor, O queen, and if it pleases the king, let my life be given me. That is my petition, and the lives of my people, that is my request. For we have been sold, I and my people, to be destroyed, to be killed, to be annihilated. If we have been so nearly as slaves, men and women, I would have held my peace. But no enemy can compensate for this damage to the king. Then King Azorus said to Queen Esther, Who is he? And where is he who has presumed to do this? Esther said, A foe and enemy, this wicked Haman. Then Haman was terrified before the king and the queen. Then Arbona, one of the eunuchs in attendance on the king, said, Look, the very gallows that Haman has prepared for Mordecai, whose word saved the king, stands at Haman's house, 50 cubits high. And the king said, hang him on that. So they hanged Haman on the gallows that he had prepared for Mordecai. Then the anger of the king abated. Mordecai recorded these things and sent letters to all the Jews who were in all the provinces of King Hazarus, both near and far and joining them that they should keep the 14th day of the month Adar, and also the 15th day of the same month, year by year, as the days on which the Jews gained relief from their enemies. 
and as the month that had been turned for them from sorrow into gladness and from mourning into a holiday that they should make them days of feasting and gladness, days for sending gifts of food to one another and presents to the poor. Hear what the scripture says, Richard. Thank you. Thank you. A reading from the letter of James. Are any among you suffering? They should pray. Are any cheerful? They should sing songs of praise. Are any among you sick? They should call for the elders of the church and have them pray over them, anointing them with oil in the name of the Lord. The prayer of faith will save the sick, and the Lord will raise them up. And anyone who has committed sins will be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins to one another and pray for one another so that you may be healed. The prayer of the righteous is powerful and effective. Elijah was a human being like us, and he prayed fervently that it might not rain, and for three years and six months it did not rain on the earth. Then he prayed again, and the heavens gave rain, and the earth yielded its harvest. My brothers and sisters, if any one among you wanders from truth, and is brought back by another, 
you should know that whoever brings back a sinner from the wandering will save the sinner's soul from death and will cover a multitude of sins. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. John said to Jesus, Teacher, we saw someone casting out demons in your name, and we tried to stop him because he was not following us. But Jesus said, Do not stop him. For no one who does a deed of power in my name will be able soon afterward to speak evil of me. Whoever is not against us is for us. For truly I tell you, whoever gives you a cup of water to drink because you bear the name of Christ will by no means lose the reward. If any of you put a stumbling block before one of these little ones who believe in me, it would be better for you if a great millstone were hung around your neck and you were thrown into the sea. If your hand causes you to stumble, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life maimed than to have two hands and to go to hell to the unquenchable fire. And if your foot causes you to stumble, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life lame than to have two feet and to be thrown into hell. 
And if your eye causes you to stumble, tear it out. It is better for you to enter the kingdom of God with one eye than to have two eyes and to be thrown into hell, where their worm never dies and the fire is never quenched. For everyone will be salted with fire. Salt is good, but if salt has lost its saltiness, how can you season it? Have salt in yourselves and be at peace with one another. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. closer to you, O oh God, our Savior. Amen. Amen. So each Sunday since late August, we've been hearing passages from the letter of James. Three Sundays ago on September 5th from chapter 2. What good is it, my brothers and sisters, if you say you have faith, but you do not have works? Can faith save you? If a brother or sister is naked and lacks daily food, and one of you says to them, Go in peace, keep warm, and eat your fill, and yet you do not supply their bodily needs, what is the good of that? So faith by itself, if it has no works, is dead. For many people, the letter of James is controversial, since in fact it is saying that faith alone is insufficient is not enough. Faith must be accompanied by, paired with, and in combination with works. We are called to do something. Yes, indeed, do something does include coming to church, praying, and working on, working on one's beliefs and practices, but there is more. We are called to do not to earn points with God by being good, because, but rather because that's what followers of Jesus do, doing what he did. Micah 6, verse 8, to act justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with your God. In last week's gospel, Jesus said, go and learn what this means. I desire mercy, not sacrifice. What does that mean? Who is to be merciful? What kind of sacrifices is Jesus talking about not wanting? As Reverend Sherry said last week, Jesus does not give us spiritual mountains to climb. Yes, our religious practices help us, but that's not the sacrifice that God requires. We sang, well, we saying quietly inside of ourselves, I suspect. And some of us were dancing a little bit, I think, at the back. Hymn 502. Um, I'm really tempted to sing this now, but instead, since I'm not an authorized singer. You can't get it, okay. That's all right. <laughs> I'm sorry, I can get it. Anyway, the refrain, and um, Val will probably get up and move to it anyway, but there you go. Bring forth the kingdom of mercy. Bring forth the kingdom of peace. Bring forth the kingdom of justice. Bring forth the city of God. So who's going to do all this? Who's going to do all the bringing forth? God, by him or herself? Indeed, this is a prayer, a prayer to God that the kingdom will come. But in fact, like all good prayers, what it is doing is it's moving us to act. We are in fact supposed to do the bringing forth. We are to do, not to sit back and expect God to do it. From today's gospel, for truly I tell you, whoever gives you a cup of water to drink because you bear the name of Christ will by no means lose the reward. Let us look for ways to give cups of water, both actually and metaphorically. 
Last week, Reverend Sherry noted that we are wired to stay comfortable. We all want to have things normal again. We want COVID to go away. We want everything to be back to normal. But what the pandemic has in fact demonstrated is that there is much inequity from who can get the vaccines, when and where they can get them. You can travel to other countries, you can fly, but in fact you cannot drive. Who is working in jobs that require the most risk? Somebody in fact had to work in the big warehouses in, in Brampton to expedite the Amazon orders I've been making over the last 18 months. They didn't get to stay home. One recent example, just in the news yesterday, talks of inequity, talks about how um, there was an indigenous community that received expired doses. Expired doses. Data will eventually show at the end of COVID that the COVID rates were much higher in marginalized and in less advantaged peoples. If it's not a return to normal, then, what are we supposed to do, both on our own here at St. Matthew's to, and, and here at St. Matthew's as well, all together, collectively? How are we supposed to bring forth the kingdom of mercy, peace, and justice? We are called, but what are we supposed to do? It's important to recognize that there are no easy answers. Questions must be asked, research must be done, and it will take time. And that's a real challenge because we're all in a hurry to do something, to be productive. And in fact, it's tempting to give from our abundance rather than to discern what the needs actually are. We also might be a little suspicious while this is all going on that actually what's needed, what's going to be asked for, is something that we actually don't have a lot of or that's in fact going to be hard to get or is going to cost us something. Hence, we're tempted to give from our abundance. There is, in fact, a congregation that I know pretty well that decided several years ago that the people in Flemington Park needed paper products. So they planned to deliver bales of toilet paper and also bales of uh, paper towels. But they didn't ask or investigate what the needs actually were. They assumed that they knew. There's a basic principle under all of this, and that is that all of us, rich, poor, whatever our skin color, whatever our country of origin, whatever our age, all of us are made in the image of God. We are, in fact, all together. It is not the rich helping the poor, but all of us helping each other. The Christ in us, helping the Christ in others. As our parish motto says, seek and serve Christ in all persons. Perhaps you have heard of this principle, nothing about us without us. Nothing about us without us. It has actually quite a long history, but most recently it's been used by disability rights advocates. If you want to solve um, accessibility challenges, you want to build ramps, fix things so that people who have difficulty hearing or seeing can in fact fit in better, Nothing about us without us means to partner on an equal basis with people with the disability and not just to go out and fix things. We must listen to those we would help. We need to partner, collaborate, walk alongside and be with people we are called to serve. That's actually quite a bit harder than delivering food or clothing to someone and driving away again. Admitting to not knowing what needs doing is hard. We must value the Christ in other people by ensuring that our relationship is reciprocal. Otherwise, of course, we erase the other person's autonomy and self-worth. Here's another no example. Many dollars have been given to pay for the technology to search for the graves of those who knew residential school children who did not come back. Much money has been given and there's fancy technology that's been developed. But a number of governments and a number of people have taken it upon themselves to do the work of finding the indigenous children who may be buried. 
instead of letting the indigenous people do the work. Reverend Lee Kern is our Diocesan Rights Relations Coordinator. She used to be called Coordinator of Indigenous Ministries, and she made a presentation with, to us um, last Advent in our Advent study. And she actually doesn't like the term ally. It was a presentation about being an ally. She doesn't like the term ally very much, and she would, in fact, much rather use the term relative. Relative makes more sense, too, doesn't it? Because it means that we are, in fact, all related. We need to listen, research, learn the history and the context, including how we are implicitly involved, even, even if we don't think we are. Remember, of course, that we are, in fact, all treaty people. We need to figure out how to change oppressive systems and amplify those voices of people who are involved who, in fact, have less privilege than we do. Want something more concrete to do? Attend a powwow like we used to do in the past as a group. Yes, it was fun. It was an adventure to take the boat across to the island. The food was interesting. The dancing was interesting. It was good. So it was kind of fun. But in fact, it's actually very important because under the Indian Act, powwows were against the law. It was not legal to have a powwow. So when we go, we are witnessing to the happening of powwows. We are witnessing. Clean water. I don't know how to set up a water system in an indigenous community, but I can write to my MP saying that I do not accept that there are still boil water advisories. City councilors and other in government will tell you that they respond to public pressure, and in fact, they put their focus where the public asks. Orange Shirt Day is coming up. Join St. Matthew's Anti-Racism Committee. Bring forth the kingdom. Listen. Christ reaching Christ. Not just from our abundance. Go into the world as agents of God's love and justice. Amen. Amen. Much Archdeacon Kim. We continue with the Apostles' Creed. Together let us confess the faith of our baptism as we say I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Having confessed our faith, let us prepare to offer our prayers to God. You are invited to stand, sit, or kneel for the prayers of the people. May the calming spirit of the Almighty be present with us as we earnestly pray, saying, Look, Lord, hear our prayer. Today in our cycle of prayer, we pray for the Episcopal Church, the clergy and people of the territory of the people, 
Parkdale, Toronto West Deanery, and St. Theodore, Canterbury. We pray for Linda, our primate, Mark, Indigenous Archbishop, Anne, Archbishop Metropolitan of Ontario, Andrew, Bishop of Toronto, Kevin, our area bishop, and in our deanery, the Flemington Park Ministry, as well as the Himalayan Christian Fellowship and the Health of Nirmal Singh. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our parish, St. Matthew the Apostle, for our incumbent, Reverend Sherry, and her family, and Archdeacon Kim and his family. We pray for all who minister at St. Matthew's, providing a place of comfort, worship, music, and fellowship, specifically in our cycle of prayer, the Toronto Urban Native Ministry. And this day, we pray for the families of Sugana Akar, Sylvia Sutherland, and Tyrone Sutherland. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all who bear the burden and privilege of leadership. May their eyes be open and may wisdom, truth, and empathy ensue through these very challenging times. Lord, hear our prayer. In our world where strife, chaos, and terror can touch so many at this time, let us pray for the people of Haiti and Afghanistan. May health, safety, and peace someday soon be realized. And thank you, Lord, for the safe return of the two Michaels. Lord, hear our prayer. In light of this coming Thursday, September 30th, that marks the National Day of Truth and Reconciliation, along with Orange Shirt Day, that raises awareness of the residential schools, we pray for the thousands of children who did not return home from those schools, and for the many Indigenous people who are missing or taken from us. May love surround them. May we find it in our hearts to listen and to hear the Indigenous people, and to speak up, to act, and to collaborate for the healing of generations past and generations to come. For this we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. As we are experiencing the fourth wave of the pandemic, we continue to remember the caregivers and the medical personnel and the essential workers. We pray for compassion, the strength to persevere, and to remain vigilant. Lord, hear our prayer. As we pray for good weather and the gifts of God's earth, let us strive to respect the fragile balance of this wondrous home that God has entrusted to us. Lord, hear our prayer. For our city and those who live and work here, we pray for those in need, as well as those who work to provide the shelter, food, and friendship. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all of those for whom our prayers have been asked, including Judith, Father John, Roland, Helen, David, June, Peter, Ray, and Sekumar. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for the dying and the dead and for those who mourn. We tr today we pray for the almost four and a half million people worldwide who have died due to COVID-19. And Ivan Richard, friend of Val in the land, and for those others known to you. Lord, Hear our prayer. We pray for ourselves, our families, and friends, and companions along the way, and for all of those we love. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord our God, accept these prayers and open our ears to your word. May we, may we, with generous and caring hearts, share with all in need, and find peace and hope and love. Amen. Amen. in Christ, God is steadfast in love and infinite in mercy. He welcomes sinners and invites them to his table. 
let us confess our sins, confident in God's forgiveness. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Friends in Christ, the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Eternal God, in Jesus Christ we behold your glory. Receive the offering of your people gathered before you, and open our hearts and mouths to praise your great salvation, the same Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Blessed are you, gracious God, creator of heaven and earth. You are the source of light and life for all your creation. 
You made us in your own image and call us to new life in Jesus Christ, our Savior. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We give thanks to you, Lord our God, for the goodness and love you have made known to us in creation, in calling Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, a death he freely accepted. Our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, Father, according to his command, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we, made acceptable in him, may be sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, reconcile all things in Christ and make them new, and bring us to that city of light where you dwell with all your children. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation by whom, and with whom, and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. We, we be many, many are one body, for we all share in one bread. bread. The gifts of God for the people of God. Christ be to God. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. 
grant us peace. joining us in worship from home, I invite you to pray the prayer of spiritual communion with me that's found in your bulletin. Jesus, I believe that you are present with us in the sacrament of bread and wine. I love you and I desire your presence afresh in my life. 
since I cannot now receive the bread and wine of the altar, come spiritually into my heart. I embrace you and unite myself to you. Never let me be separated from you. Father in heaven, strengthen the unity of your church so that we who have been fed with holy things may fulfill your will in the world. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus, forever and ever. Amen. Just a couple announcements this morning. Please make sure both to read your emails from Donna, but also the announcements listed in the back of your bulletin. A special thank you to uh, Steve and Val, our church wardens, who have been working um, around the clock on our new vaccination policy. Thank you both. Um, and yes, <laughs> uh, if you volunteer in one of St. Matthew's ministries, uh, please make sure uh, to see them uh, after the service if you haven't already done so. You will also see our advisory board uh, meetings coming up, Harvest Thanksgiving two weeks away already, new Bible study series uh, happening this week, Messy Church next Saturday, um, our travel adventure series this Thursday, and St. Matthew's Anti-Racism Committee, please uh, do let us know if you would like to join in this very important work. Thank you. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of his Son, Jesus Christ the Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, 
the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you, upon those whom you love and those whom you would pray for this day and always. Amen. Amen. Bring forth the kingdom. Go into the world as agents of God's love and justice. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. 